What's up guys, Sal here. So a few days ago, we came across a rumor from the South Korean website The Elec, which is reputable by the way that the Galaxy Z Fold 3 launching in the second half of next year will have a weird screen size where the inner display will be of the same size as the Galaxy Z Fold 2, while the outer display will shrink down to the original Galaxy Z Fold size to 4.6 inches. At that time, I said it's very unlikely that this would happen. I mean, why would Samsung handicap the Z Fold 3 like this? So it turns out that was indeed the case. Ross Young, the CEO of Display Supply Chain Consultants, just tweeted out that the Z Fold 3's main display shrinks from 7.59 inches to 7.55 inches, which is basically the same, while the cover display goes from 6.23 inches on the Z Fold 2 to 6.21 inches on the Z Fold 3, which is also basically the same. Apparently, Samsung is shrinking this fraction of the display size to make more room for the S Pen, which is understandable, but the good news here is that we're not gonna see the small outer screen, which is a sigh of relief. Now, Ross Young also shares some information about the Galaxy Z Flip 3. The screen will increase ever so slightly to 6.7 inches from 6.67 inches, but the important thing is it will feature a 120Hz LTPO adaptive refresh rate display, the similar one we have on the Galaxy Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. Anyway, a few days ago, we saw the first look of the Galaxy A72, an upper mid-ranger from Samsung. We know quite a few things about it, but the handset has appeared on Geekbench revealing the chipset the phone will end up with. You would be disappointed if you are hoping for Exynos 1080 because the 4G version of the Galaxy A72 will have Snapdragon 720G, which is actually a downgrade compared to the Galaxy A71 which has Snapdragon 730. If you remember, the Galaxy A52 was also benchmarked with the Snapdragon 720G for the 4G version, so this means the 4G variant of the A72 will have a 720G processor, while the 5G version will have Snapdragon 750G which actually gives a near flagship performance and is better than the Snapdragon 765. Also, the Galaxy S20 FE has proven itself to be very popular since launch, quickly rising to the top 3 of Samsung's lineup. According to Jeff Moore at Wave 7 Research, carrier stores are calling the S20 FE a hit with a majority of them telling the research firm that the phone has quickly become one of Samsung's top 3 sellers. According to a further report from Wave 7, the S20 FE beat out the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra as well as eating up the market for Samsung's A-series devices in the A51 and A71. Other phones in the top 3 according to the carrier stores sampled include the lesser Note 20, the Galaxy S20 and in some cases the Note 20 Ultra. Of course, with that being said, let me know what you think about this down in the comments. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.